G'day fellas and welcome to game number three of your first week of Outback Octagon 2. The map is Tasmania. We are back once again and I've got a special, I've got a suspicion things are going to get a little bit dicey for someone in the middle. Spawning in on the north side of the map in the color blue on the Mongols. It's Vortex. To their east, in the color green, playing as the Mongols as well. It's Salami. To his right, in the color teal, playing as the Chinese. Crackety here. To his far south, playing in the color purple, also as the Chinese. It's Symptom. Awkwardly positioned between all three of them in the color yellow on the Delhi Sultanate. It's Beastie Cutie. To their south, in the orange, playing as the Mongols, Zerton. To his south, on the French, in the color pink, Striker. And by his lonesome, lonesome self. Playing the Chinese in the color red. It's state. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the situation. My name is Ozzy Drongo. I'll, I'll be leading the sit rep today. We've got a problem. There's a problem in paradise. Well, you'll see, we know what happens when two girls get stuck between one cup, but what happens when <laughs> Where do we even go from there? Oh gosh, all right. Um, this is, um, wow, this is already a write-off. Anyway, <laughs> what happens when a beast gets caught between three, three demons? I don't even know where to go from there. <laughs> oh Lord, oh Lord, what have we done? Ladies and gentlemen, Beastie is on the Delhi Sultanate. Now this is the elephant quite literally in the room. He came into Twitch chat yesterday. He said, Drongo, I'm feeling it. I'm going to get the Malians tomorrow. And I said, I'm sorry, Beastie, but you're going to get the Delhi. And that's exactly what happened. We gave him the curse. The caster's curse came through. And unfortunately, Beastie did roll the Delhi. The good news is, Beastie is not tethered by his landmarks. He might lose the king. Or rather, I should say, he might lose the town center. But that doesn't mean he's going to lose the king. If he's able to get the king out, there's a potential chance he can look to move to the middle of the map, maybe even towards a sacred site or two. And as, as the Delhi Sultanate, we know how important those things can be. Up towards the north of the map, though, by his lonesome self, he's got a dock out towards the west side. Vortex, he's a happy camper. He's got plenty of space up here. In fact, we've got three players with plenty of space. Striker, State, Vortex. All the other five are within barely an eighth of this map. Just remember that this map is reduced in size because of the water that's around it. For anybody unfamiliar with this map, this is Tasmania. Tasmania is a part of Australia that's often left off maps, which is why, it's why we decided to feature it. It's one of the most beautiful places uh, in Australia, an absolutely amazing place uh, to visit. So if you're interested in touring down there, make sure you go do it. But anyway, Let's talk a little bit more about this situation. So how does Beastie get out of here? Well, I, I think the answer is pretty simple. Honestly, if I'm Beastie, all I'm looking to do, migrate all my villagers, migrate my king uh, as soon as I'm about to age up. Just just move. I, I would be looking to move maybe towards this sacred site, the, the closest sacred site as possible. And I would just set up camp there. But it's going to depend on a number of factors. Uh, he might not be aware of where all of the enemies are. Um, and it's going to be tough for him to know because we've got God Vision. We've got Omnivision. Whereas he doesn't have that. So we'll take a look on board because at the moment he is doing a pretty decent job of just gathering up the fish. He does actually spot out the deep sea fish, but decides he's going to stick on the land or the, on, the, on the shore fish for the moment. Uh, what I'm going to do... Oh no, don't say that. I just saw state crashed. Don't say that. Where's state? State's over here. State's moving. It's okay. That's all right. 
All right, I, I need to fix up this in-game chat window. I, I thought I made it perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to find we're gonna find one of these cans. And we're just going to follow it for a little bit. And I'm going to try and make this chat window a little bit bigger or a little bit better. So it needs to go something like that. And then maybe make it down like that. So hopefully that makes it a little bit better for you guys. All right, well, <laughs> I'm not going to pay attention to the, ch the chat. If, if that happens, it happens. But we do see the first of the mosques coming down for Beastie. I feel like I'm almost casting a 1v1. Well, it's a bit, it's a bit more than a 1v1. It's a 1v, 1v3. It's, it's not pretty. He's surrounded on three sides. And we've already got a stable coming out as well from Salami. A lot of sheep underneath this town center. Obviously, this is Tasmania. It is a sheep lover's paradise for all you sheep lovers out there. Uh, if, if you're a big fan of the wool. And that, that's only 23 sheep right here. He's also got sheep over on this, on this west side. So hopefully chat is all fixed up. Hopefully you should be able to see everything over there. It's, it's a little bit awkward. I, I will just say, um, doing the chats. So you can see right now. Uh, so chat changes if somebody dies or if they get eliminated. The chat moves down the screen. Uh, whereas if they're alive, it is, it is, it is not the case. All right. So if I had to pick a favorite for this game, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to go with State. Not only does he have the Chinese, but he's got this entire corner to himself. Uh, his closest neighbors, I mean, it's, it's the Mongols, right? And you can always push them back. So I don't think he's going to be too fussed about that. But we do hear the age up starting to come through. Vortex, going to be looking to go into the silver tree. No real surprise there. It's not the first landmark that has been put down. We do see that Salami did go for the Yam Network of the Deer Stones. Uh, so looking to, to head into that uh, instead. Uh, but uh, we do see additional... Oh, Oh, don't do him like that. Don't do him like that. But you, you got to remember. Oh, gosh. See, he can rally Vils out this side. This is fine. Beastie just has to be like a chameleon. A chameleon? No, he needs to be like an octopus. He needs to understand, okay, what's happening here? I'm probably going to lose this TC. I've got people on the top side, people on the bottom side. How do I play this out from here? And I think this is where you've just kind of got, got to give it up. And you've got to say, I, I can't win this game if I just sit in here. I have to squeeze my way out. Barbican has come come up. So it means he's going to have to pop out Vils on the bottom side of the town center. If they go from the top side, they will get shot. So Barbican is up. And Beastie stuck between a rock and a hard place. Crackety also in a bit of a difficult spot. In, in fact, I would arguably say Crackety's in a worse spot despite having less players around him. Just simply because you can't really go through Salami. Whereas Beastie can kind of come down and around, but it's it's slowly time is, is is running out for him. And now we see Symptom looking to make a Barbican in the middle of the map. And you can see already people are starting to claim this up, but Beastie's out here already. He realizes, hey, I want to take this, but Symptom might be denying that sacred site before he even reaches funeral. Age up's now coming through. Imperial Academy coming down for state. He's having an absolute blast of a game early on here. Very happy with how things are going for him. The first landmarks are making their way through. School of Cavalry coming up for Striker. Silver Tree for Zerden. So we got three Chinese players, three Mongol mm. players in this game. So I, I would be expecting the... He goes for the landmark in the base and an outpost comes up. Sim Tom looking to take out one of the tournament favorites early on in this game. He has got aggression on both sides. Honestly, this might be a blessing in disguise. I just, I want to sell it to you as a blessing in disguise. If Beastie can be convinced to pick up and go somewhere else, that, that could be a really good thing for him because he's starting to lose villages now. We can see oh, here, these villages taking a lot of damage. You can, oh my Lord, he's going to have to cancel. There's no way that Tower of Victory comes up. And Beastie surrenders. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Well, the first player eliminated from this game is Beastie. Now, technically the king is still in play. Uh, if, if you want to try and... So you can see right now that we've got Crackety moving up to kill the king. He's popped out of the town center. This will give him an extra 50 population. Extra 50 population space coming out right here. But Crackety will, will probably not be awarded points here because the king is technically not in play in the sense that uh, he, he was going to... Um, that, that he was going to die imminently, right? Beastie just surrendered. Uh, and and th there was attacks on on both fronts. Uh, and so to be unfortunate, because I, I definitely think that there was a way out for Beastie there. It obviously wasn't going to be an easy game for him, but we have seen people, in fact, and it was the yellow player uh, yesterday who also did the same thing, Averly, managed to escape from a situation that was very similar to this and was able to, w was able to keep himself alive for a very long time. So it, it's unfortunate, but... I don't necessarily think... 
I'm just having a look at the water. And we, we, oh, yeah, we can actually see Beastie was going to be losing his water as well. So very, very tough position for Beastie. All of his fishing boats were out here. He was getting pushed by Crackety at the same time. So really difficult spot for him. And unfortunately, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Sometimes you get a good spawn and sometimes you get sandwiched between three players. So a little bit unfortunate. It almost felt inevitable. So hopefully Beastie in round number two can pick up, pick it up from where it was. A really unfortunate end there to the Beast. But we move forward. We move on. Because a whole bunch of things are going to be changing. We see piracy upgrades coming through for Vortex. It's a curious upgrade that he's looking to move into. If I remember, if I remember correctly, it's for every ship that he sinks, he's going to be increasing or getting resources from it. And we see him starting to move out now. At the same time, Age Up's coming through. So he's looking to sink down the fishing boats and grab the resources from them. Because he's got the piracy upgrade. You can see right there. So he picks up 25 gold, 25 wood. Very smart use of, the, of that upgrade. Demo ship comes through. Tries to get the trade off. Not successful. And you can see the difference right there between state and vortex. He recognizes, hey, I don't have to worry about that. But one less player on the east side is going to mean a little bit more space. But that space is not going to last forever. Zertan is positioned somewhat awkwardly. Between Striker, between Symptom. To the north, you've still got Crackety who's going to be fighting for position, and we can see what he's heading into. It's going to be early Zhukunu. But towards that west side of the map, the water battle continues raging on. Age ups now come through. The first of the castle ages has been hit. It's by Salami. Step it out coming out, and we see the traction trebuchet. Vortex reaches the Castle Age as well. That makes two of them. Both of the Mongol players aging up now. Traction Trebuchet just going to slowly start working down. Focusing down the village. We'll ride on board now. What are we going to ride on board with? I think we ride on board with the Striker. He looks pretty happy down there. The Lancer comes out though. You can see he's already picked up plenty of armor. This is going to be a tough fight here for Krakeny. Salami doing a really good job early on to get aggressive. If they're not careful, Salami could actually look to take out a lot of players here. He's positioned very well to do so. Knights coming through for a bit of a raid. All right, well, for the moment... Aggression happening on this east side, but the walls continue coming up over on the west. Take a look at that. First walls of the game. Now, granted, there are three Mongols in this game. So there's not going to be a whole lot of walls on this map. But there may be outposts. Another age up comes through. We've now got Simtom, who's reached the castle age. Where is that landmark, though? Did he go for it in the middle? I don't see where that castle age landmark is. Am I blind? Is he hiding it somewhere? Oh no, he's, he's in feudal age. Why did I think that he was age three? Oh no, it's state. I apologize. State is, is, is the one who's now gone through uh, to castle age. All right. We'll check in back over on that east side and see how the push is happening as Krakeny looks to have stabilized over on the east side. A little bit unfortunate for Krakeny. I'm sure he would have loved to have picked up that early point from taking out Beastie, but... I think the reality is, is just w when you leave like that early on, definitely mucks it up for some of the other players. But I guess at the end of the day, he's not too fussed about the other players. He's more fussed about himself. Especially the first round. It's really important to have a good game on the first round. Get yourself a bit of tempo. And speaking of tempo, the Mangonel comes out. Mangonel looking to get some big shots off. He's going to hit. Oh, it's huge damage. A lot of damage onto these. Jukunu. The damage really starting to get wild, but now towards the middle of the map, Vil's going to get picked up as well. Action starting to unfold everywhere. Zertan looking to start picking up relics. We can see him moving out across the map. It sounds like Castle Age going to be coming through for Striker. Indeed. Going to be dropping down the Royal Institute. Not moving into the Guild Hall, which is a little bit strange considering that he's a free-for-all. Crackety not looking to go through to the Castle Age at this stage. Obviously, Castle Age would be lovely here for him. Allows him to get access to the Springled. But not going to happen here. And Striker, with those night numbers, going to continue improving. 
Meanwhile, on, on water, State has completely nullified that attack from his opponent. He's been pushed back. And now Vortex just gets to chill for a bit. But still, Vortex is... I, I think Vortex realizes that there might be a bit of a... Wait, was Crackety aging up? Oh, I, I missed it completely. Clock Tower now coming in over on the west side. I completely missed the Clock Tower. I must have caught him in the transition. Springwood coming through. I suspect that's probably a Springwood coming through. Where, where, where is he at the top here? Crackety, there you are. We don't see it yet. The Trebs slowly but steadily working this down. Fishing boat's going to move across here for Simtom. He's getting pushed off water. We can see right now that Zertan doing a good job to push him back. Just realize there's quite a few Germans in this game, isn't there? Chukunu takes a shot to the face. Yet to get the upgrades through for them, despite hitting the castle. The Springled's out, but look at this! Simtom's going to catch the Springled. No Simtom, he needs that Springled for defense, and the Springled goes down! Terrible timing there. The Chukunu not able to protect the Springled. There's an additional Springled on the way through, though. Down on the south side, looks like we've got an outpost on one of those gold veins. And battles in the middle of the map over what appear to be relics. A single Mongol player out here collecting relics. My question is, where are Salami's relics? He hasn't bothered to collect any. Vortex already on two relics and Shukanu trying to split. Vil's getting pulled to repair. Where is the king? The king makes his way to the Barbican. Crackity here trying to survive. I mentioned earlier, I, di I didn't think Beastie was in the worst spot. I actually thought Crackity was in the worst spot because there's no way that he gets out. Unless he tries a sneaky up through the top side here, it's really not going to happen. Four Trebs now coming out. King's going to have to make a run for it. He needs a transport ship. He needs something to get out of here. There's the transport ship. He's found it. He looks to evacuate. Remember, Kraken, he's already picked up a kill early on in this game. So he's a massive threat the longer this game goes on. On top of that, he's also playing the Chinese, considered by many to be the best FFA civilization. And Zertan now ages up to the castle age. Springled goes down again. Crackety, going to be forced to evacuate from here. But I suspect he won't be the only one for too much longer. The king. Where is the king? Where did the king go? Is the king... Did the king migrate north? There's the king. The king is hold, hold out in a transport ship for the moment. Nice and safe. If you want to take him out, you're going to have to push on water. And speaking of pushing on water, Zertan coming around. This could be terrible right now. Looks to pull villagers towards the transport ship. He's going to be able to get them on top. Yeah, I don't actually know what happens. If this transport ship goes down, if he runs into a whole bunch of war junks or something, I don't actually know what happens. I don't know... Does Zert Like, obviously the king dies. Zertan gets the kill and we give him the points. But... What happens to, like, the population? So the migration's coming out. Kraken, he's going to need to find somewhere new to live. And he's going to have to go through an, a previous neighbor, Simtom. There's a lot of fishing boats up here. I, I actually... You know what? He's not going to have to go through it. But I'm already loving the way that Simtom's playing this. Moving to the middle of the map. He's got the Barbican here, but there are a lot of knights. And they find all the villagers. He catches. But this, this is one of those things where it becomes like, was this the right decision? Because remember, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And you can see right now that Strike has just taken out a whole bunch of villagers from Simtom on the other side of Zertan. So perhaps it was a, a, a little bit short-sighted, you can say. I mean, you see the juicy villagers, so you just go for it. But now we see... Knights beginning to head through. Salami going to be caught on the run here. Another huge attack coming through. Simtom is, is or rather Striker is just looking to clean up villages everywhere. We'll take a look up towards the north side. As those transport ships are on the move, you can see the king is still alive in the transport ship. We will keep track of him throughout this game. A lot of dead villages on the ground. Salami down to 36 villages here. Slowly but steadily, the migration is happening towards the middle. Simtom reaches the castle age as well. And just remember, you don't need to be tied to these landmarks. Sure, it's nice to have them, but you don't need to be tied to them. Your game will not end if you lose them. And the stone walls start coming up from state. Two games in a row, we're going to see this west corner be a holdout. But keep in mind, there are ways around it. King? King? Where's the king? King back here, nice and safe. For the moment, more knights moving through. Second town center actually going to be coming up here. We'll have to make sure that we are riding on board. Down towards this this south side, this east side. 
because there is a lot of action. And now we start to see stone walls coming out. I'm, I'm very curious to hear the thinking behind Striker not going for the guild hall. I feel like, especially in free for all, guild hall on stone is just like, it's, it's almost a free win. I, I genuinely think French is so underrated in free for all because of the guild hall. Krakeny trying to boom back into the game. Still sitting on 50 vils. Managing to keep his head above water. Got a lot of villagers out here. Fishing boats, rather. The town center is going to go down. So Krakeny trying to keep it all alive. Nine villagers going to get mauled. And Striker really just catching a lot of people out here. Unprepared. And it all goes down to that early game. And you can see that there are going to be some dominant people starting to come from this early decision for so many people to anchor towards that east corner. At the same time, up towards that west corner. Lancers are the name of the game here. Vortex coming in hot, runs into a stone wall and has to obviously head back. Plenty of spears out here. No Imperial Ages for anybody yet at this stage. Remember that. A lot of stone walls going up, though. You love seeing it. I, I love playing on the defense right here and having, having these stone walls. B big night numbers. Trebs trying to come through. Look at the splits. Oh, don't mind if I do. It's, it's only trebuchets, but he still does the splits. Magical stuff right there. Coming out from Striker. Really taking the time just to make sure his units are keeping maximum health. He does lose a couple of knights there to the Trebs, so who knew what happens when a 300-pound weight gets hurdled? What was it? What is it? A hundred, a hundred yards? Two hundred yards? I don't remember the meme. It's been too long. It's been a long time since I've seen a trebuchet meme. But I, I suspect their stocks are on the rise. Crackety. Plenty of food in the bank. Not a whole lot of anything else, though. And a keep does come down. The question's going to be, how long does Vortex take before he realizes what's happening? And Simtom also on the moon. Now, remember, if he brings the king over and puts the king in the keep... That's going to expose it to Vortex in the event that Vortex looks to reveal the location of enemies. Sacred Sight being captured now in the south. And more knights moving around. The entire base of Krakeny has been destroyed. But now Salami's coming up next. There's a lot of knights here. Tries his best to outmaneuver the enemy. Does a pretty decent job. Picks up the trebuchets on the east side. Plenty of knights, though. Taking out all the siege. And this is starting to look a little bit scary. Salami might be the first player that actually gets eliminated. I mean, we've, we've had a player quit, but I wouldn't necessarily say that that's an elimination. And look at this. The spears. Simtom was hunting. Simtom knew that the king was around somewhere. Speaking of kings. How, much, how many resources does Salami have in the bank right now? Eight food. He needs to get to 400. He's, he's on to 400. He can make a run to the water if, he, if he's got the transport ship ready. He's got the transport ship ready. He needs to try and make a run. The surround's coming through. He can look to try and pop the villagers out, bait all the knights down. He's going to need to really time this perfectly. Town center on fire. He's got the resources to pop it. The king is out! The king is out! He hits the button. Everybody makes his way over to Watts. <laughs> Look at the madman go. He's got the transport ship lying in wait and everybody gets out. He's got just enough space and Striker chases after him. The king gets inside and he says, See ya! <laughs> Beautiful play there from the Wallalo God himself. Salami finds another life. This, the king is in a different castle, my friend. The king is in a different castle. Oh. You've really got to be prepared for those king runs. You've, you've almost got to expect it. I, I can't help but feel like players will evolve over this event and they will position their knights. And you, you could see that Striker was somewhat prepared for it. But the, oh, the, there's another king on the, the king on the ground. King on the ground. The floor is lava right now. And the king... Simtop, is he racing towards anywhere? No, there's no there's no transport ship. He's got a keep here, though. King jumps inside the keep. He's under pressure, though. Zertan pushing from the bottom side. Knight's on the top side. It looks like Zertan might be in trouble as Striker looks to pick up his first kill of this game. King now exposed on the ground. He surrounds, and he goes for the, the shot. It's it. Simtop assassinated, and Striker picks up the first elimination of this game. Striker causing... Huge amounts of havoc and you can see he's already up to 220 population right now. These knights are relentless. A lot of people look at the French and think, eh, it's just the French. Yeah, mate, that's just the French with royal bloodlines in the castle age. He doesn't need to go Imperial. He can. He doesn't need to. 
In fact, I think he's already going in now. He is. It's the Red Palace coming down. And look at this. He's hunting. He is on the hunt. He's found the next town center. He's just taking out Mongol player after Mongol player. He's gone to Salami. He said, see you, mate. He came up over towards the east side. And now just looking to just completely overwhelm the enemy. Over towards the west side. Fire Lancers are now out for state. And plenty of Lancers now moving up towards that north side. Just when Crackity was going to be building a new home. He may have exposed himself, though. Town center. Burning. He's going to have to try and run to the water as well. Let's see if he's able to do it. He's got a lot more buildings here. If anything, I'd probably expect him to unpack the buildings. And the town center is going to go down. King's going to pop out on this top side. Where's the king? There's the king. The king's on the bottom. Striker assassinates Zerton. And that's two for Striker in quick succession. He moves up to a total of 300 pop cap and puts himself in a wonderful position for the late game. Keep in mind this entire time, State has just been happily booming. His maximum population, 135 bills, just buying his time, biding his time rather. Meanwhile, Striker is an absolute giga chad. The civilization, what, excuse me, sir, do you, did you, did you get the, look at the, the Lancers are like, we want to be knights as well. It's, it's like when, <laughs> it's like when the, when the dogs, no, it's like when, when the pigs join the dogs. You guys have seen all the memes of like, he thinks he's a dog. Yeah, he thinks, he, he thinks he's a knight. <laughs> look at him go. There's actually multiple ones in there. He's got, there's like three of them following along. Striker looking for the next king now. Where is that next king? Well, there, there's one in the north side. These cavalry players are just taking over the game right now. The king over towards the east here for the transport ship remains. And the king, the king, the king, the king escapes. Oh, he's taking a huge amount of damage to the veteran archers. He gets inside the outpost, pops it in, does a little pop over the top, manages to get out alive, and Crackity moves up towards the north side. Not a lot of attack vessels on this part, and the king gets out alive. Crackity manages somehow to get that king out. And once again, th this is just, in my opinion, this is just a mistake that was made here from Vortex. 100% he could have killed this king. But unfortunately, he was out of position. You you've got to know how the king spawns. Remember, the king is always going to spawn on that top side of, of the landmark. Unless the landmark goes down, we've, we've seen the king spawn down on the bottom side. But for the most part, it will come out the top if someone's looking for an escape. King, 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 king. King manages to survive, but look at this. Oh no, the Galliuses are in. Now, I, I will just say, I'm not 100% sure what happens. If the Galliuses kill the transport ship and the king is inside, I'm not 100% sure what happens. Uh, but I would suspect that even if... It, uh, I don't know whether Salami's going to get eliminated. I don't know whether Strike is going to get the extra 50 population. Um, and these are issues that we can't really get rid of because they're hard-coded into the game. Um, th I, I was actually talking with, with the developer of this mod and he said, the only thing that we can really uh, do here... Appar apparently it should. Apparently it should work. All right. Oh! Oh, I, I totally missed it. Cracker here gets assassinated. Vortex assassinates him. So I, th I think it was a whole bunch of crossbows on the shoreline. Looks like he did go down. So my question is, does Vo uh, Vortex does pick up the extra 50 pop. Okay, wonderful. It works. Oh, there was a part of me that was a little bit worried right there. Whew. Okay, well, I think that's the... Is that the first king kill that we've missed this game? You'll have to forgive me. There's quite a few. <laughs> there's quite a few things going on right now. And Vortex looking to try and pick up a kill. Remember that uh, that striker not too long ago was looking after this or looking to get this king. The king. The king's on the ground. He pops the movement speed though. He says, "Hey, I'll see you later. I got, I got a meeting to get to." The villagers. He tries for the block. He's keeping it alive. And the king gets onto the other side of the transport ships. He keeps himself alive a little bit longer. He wants to rebuild. He's got himself. He's got five villagers, and he's got a dream right now. Unless, unless. Oh, the king gets out again! The Gallius has turned! The Gallius has turned! All of the Royal Knights is gonna try and get the snipe. The king gets out! It's down to 131 health! 86 health! And Striker takes out Salami. Rest in peace, little guy. It was a pleasure watching you play along until the end. But unfortunately... Oh... The Galliuses were just too strong. Striker picks up another kill. The French is taking over the game, but... Oh my... <laughs> The cavalry is just overwhelming this game right now. It is crazy to see how many kills are just... Look, look at the way that they're playing. Everyone... 
Hey, you got any of the, you got any of those kings? And I guess this just goes to show the the weakness of the Mongols. I guess that's probably it. Maybe you got to focus a little bit more on defending. And you can see that Vortex is scrambling to get the king into, <laughs> into a transport ship. He does it. He escapes out the back. This is just transport king transport ship shenanigans at this point. King stays nice and alive. When it comes to the enemy kings, where are they currently sitting? Where, where is the king for striker? He's safe. He's in the town center. Big battles happening, unfolding. Lancers, fire lancers, and knights all going up against each other here. And you can see that striker just having an absolute field day. So all five spawns in the east have died. Every single one of them has died. Only players that remain are the three that didn't spawn in the east. And I think that's something for us to, to head back to the drawing board and look at. Nesta B's firing off at the town center. Not going to find anything here. Over on the west side, we'll check in and see if we can find that king. He's safe. He's in a keep. So we've got two kings. Nice and safe. Third king towards that top side. But there are enemies on the lookout. Oh, I have to fix chat. True. Thank you very much for reminding me. Hopefully that fixes it up. Big defense coming in at the moment from Vortex, though. So I think one of the ways that we could potentially look to change this is just make this map gigantic. So it spawns in as large. That's how we normally spawn it in when it's, uh, when it's an eight-player FFA because we don't want the map to be crazy big. But if we make it gigantic, then it is going to increase the size of the map. But you've got to remember that this map is a lot smaller because of the fact that there is water around the edge of the map. And so the play area is significantly smaller than other maps. So perhaps that's one of the things that we could look to do if, if players play on, on Tasmania. We just make it gigantic instead. That way they've got a little bit more space. Because I do feel for all these players on the east side. It's just unfortunate that that's where they all decided to go. Boiling oil. Hits a lot of the knights. Remember, these are French knights. Worst case scenario, they just do a little bit of healing. And you can see how little damage they're taking. I think we saw one knight go down there. Boiling oil comes out again. Village is going to go down here. Nice attempt by State to get up over on the board here. But now there are three. Three that remain. Baoshwan's going up against Baoshwan's. Remember the Nesta B emplacement can happen. Whether he looks for the upgrade or not is a different story. And that king. He's getting closed in on. Gallius is towards the north. Baoshuan's towards the south. And a king in a transport ship. State making his way over towards the south side. Probably realizes he can't play the late game here against Striker. There's no way he can play the late game here. Just simply because Striker has got so much more population, max population space. Even though you've got China and you're like, yeah, China's fine. Yeah, China might be fine. But not when you're down 150 population space. And take a look at that. Striker on 310 out of a max of 350. King is on the move. King on the move, making his way towards the Red Palace. Court Architects not yet through. Red Palace is not stonewalled in either. Remember that. Very important to, to double stonewall. You want a stonewall on the front and you want a stonewall in the king inside the keep. Just so it's able to stay alive if there's any fire lances that get through exactly like this. We do see the bombards will get picked up on the back, but it's not going to really matter. All that really matters is going to go for the relics. Look to try and regroup here. Could still look for a snipe. He's got a lot of fire lances here. King on the north side. Where, where, where did the king go? Where did he sneak off to? He's down here on the shore. Another counter-offensive happening. Vortex looking to try and put in the work. Attacks. He's, he's actually... Oh, he's got the uh, he's got the outpost repairing. Fire Lancers did get pushed back. Quite honestly, I think he could... I, I genuinely think he probably could, take, could have taken out the king right here. Th this, this is enough to take out the king. But he doesn't look for it. And the, the wall gets healed up. Gallius is still not yet pushing down upon that king. Vortex keeping himself alive. And now going to be looking for a snipe himself. Now remember... Not only is the king safe inside a keep that is surrounded by these stone walls, but he's pretty far away from the water's edge. So you're going to need to actually get bombards or rams through here. And now the fire lancers look to loop back around. Still 31 of them. Remember boiling oil? 
is in... Oh, it's not in play. Boiling oil yet to be researched by Striker. Oh, this could be a huge mistake. He doesn't have the resources for it. Cannon emplacement not through. And the Fire Lancers are going for it. He could look to find it here. Striker now coming through from the south side. Everyone pulls out their Lancers. It's a little bit of a an awkward position trying to get in here. And you can see all the Fire Lancers just getting eaten alive by the pathing. Fire Lancers turn their attention towards that Red Palace. The Red Palace starts to eat them alive. And unfortunately, just too many, too many Fire Lancers went down here. And it wasn't even close. Not even a thousand points taken off. I think if he'd committed at the very beginning, it would have been a different story. Gallius is looking for that king. I don't know where the king's gone. Where are you, king? I don't see the transport ships. Did he, did he, did he sneak it through? I wish there was a way for me to see all the kings. I need, I need a find king button. I'm sure the knights will find it though. Oh, there's the king. There's the king. He's on the transport ship still. He's being held out on the transport ship. Really the only way that the Mongols can actually hold their kings for extended periods of time. Feels like the transport ship. They don't have access to stone walls. They don't have access to any kind of high health building. Interesting gathering of resources right there. Obviously a lot of action going on right now. And Striker pushing towards 350 pop. Definitely at this point, Vortex and State could say, hey, we've got to deal with this guy. He's got three kills. He's going to take, he's going to 2v1 us if we don't. And they could look to take him out. That is a more than acceptable way for these players to play. Remember that we, we, we tell them that you're not allowed to form an alliance with anybody unless there is a significant mutual threat. And a significant mutual threat is defined as a sacred victory attempt. A wonder victory attempt. Or if there is a, an economic runaway, like somebody with lots of trades, or traders like Wham. Or if it's somebody with a lot of kills like Striker. So definitely he would meet that threshold. The king. Safely out from the water. Fearful of snipes. You can see the Baoshuan is, is looking to find that transport ship. Nice little attack coming through once again. Striker on the 2v1. He's looking to cause havoc in both bases. He's up to 150 knights at the moment. Only making knights. Not interested in anything else. How does he breach the walls then? And to be honest, these walls are kind of close. But the king is in another castle now. The king's moved on to somewhere else. I don't know exactly where the king's gone. Oh, he's, he's just chilling outside the keep right now. Uh. Oh. Uh, what? What is the king doing? And why can't I select? Oh, no, I can select it. It's just, it's a bit bugged. It's a bit bugged. I just got a bit worried. I'm like, um, why is state's king just sitting there like that? John Hardy in the chat saying, you got to put him outside the, the keep to gain the vision. Of course, that does make sense. And a huge mass of knights. Now going to be going up against a big front line here. The attack speed arrow comes off and striker looks to take out the army of Vortex. There is a crossbow, a single crossbow in here trying to bait out the enemy. Look at the knight numbers. He surrounds him completely. I've never seen this many knights in my life. Looking for that king. The king is over on the transport ship, over on the west side here. If he's able to take out this army, which he is, there's going to be nothing left to defend that king. He's going to have to head out into the water, into the open ocean. And he completely eviscerates the army. 118 knights still on the field now for striker. Completely destroyed. Fortunately, didn't fall for the, the, the one unit inside the outpost bait. But the transport ship moves away. And this is where you got to start fighting on water as well. If you want to get the, the kill on water, you got to start bringing in the boats. If we take a look at the boats right now that Striker's got, he's got a Carrick back here. He could look to put on pressure with the Carrick. But the night numbers are incredible at this point. And you've got to remember, these are one of the most uh, population efficient units in the game, and he is maxed out on them. He is completely maxed on, on knights. 338. <laughs> He's actually run out of food for the moment. State still sitting very happily on his 200 population. He could look for a snipe. Again, potentially. 
could maybe go for a drop around the backside. And we can see the Gallius is making moves. Striker trying to prevent any kind of vision. And indeed, the Bausch one's going to be moving out. And now Vortex getting completely cleaned up on land. Striker. Very cognizant of the fact that 2v1 might be happening. And forces one of the players into a very weak position. You can see... Oh, wow. Is he going for a snipe? I, th I think Vortex might be taking state down with him. He says, well, I'm going down. Oh, he got assassinated. Oh, I didn't see it. Where was the king? I completely missed it. Did he, he lost a ship somewhere. I lost... I apologize. We're going to need to see the action replay. I missed two king kills in this game. And then there were two. Oh, who is this commentator? Who is the observer? Who is this observer? We, we need to get a new observer in. Vodka! Oh, it's a feels bad moment right there. When the king goes down, but there's only two kings that remain. And it's going to be a bit of an, a, a bit of a tough battle. Striker picking up another kill here. The rich get richer. Up to 400 population, 181 knights. And you know, the, the discussion was happening behind the scenes. Is, is 50 population too much? Well, maybe when you see it utilized like this, it could be exhibit A. The knight's completely overwhelming and the game gets called. Striker victorious here. State realizing there's no way he can beat that many knights. And game number three comes to an end with a lot of knights on the battlefield and Striker cleaning up completely in a 43 minute game on Tasmania. And it looks like my game has just frozen. I think that's what I've got. Either my computer's frozen, my game is frozen, one of the two. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to leave it there. If you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you guys have enjoyed this game. Definitely some food for thought after that one. But we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.